Hi folks, Scott Sager with you again here in the RTC TV studios. We got a new guy with us today. Got to introduce him first and foremost. Ladies and gentlemen of RTC viewership, Steve Stricker. Steve is our new sports director here at RTC TV4. He's been with me for about uh, five weeks now and I can't tell you how I didn't know how much I needed him until he got here. This guy is doing phenomenal things with our sports coverage. So we want to bring Steve in today and introduce him a little bit. But uh, then we've got a uh, sectional preview ahead. We've got a lot of sectional coverage, a lot of postseason coverage of all sorts of sports. We'll focus on football here today. But again, uh, just wanted to introduce everybody to this guy, Steve Stricker. Welcome, Steve. Thank you. I appreciate it. And uh, it's been a good, actually, almost nine weeks nine now. Nine weeks now. How the, time flies. The first uh, week of football, the next Monday, was when I started full time. Wow. So we're wow. getting down to the end of football season already. And yeah. Hard to believe that sectionals are coming up right now. It, it, it's been just a whirlwind. Uh, in case you didn't know, uh, Steve has been with us up at the Argus Crew, what, three years? Uh, you did it with RTC. You did it a couple of years with another group before then to kind of get your feet wet, if you will. And yeah. uh, we built on that. And uh, great things still happening up there at Argus. But as part of bringing Steve in, uh, there were some things that kind of led to that. And one of those was a decision to go ahead and go from four schools to eight schools. So, um, you know, we'll talk about that here for a second. Um, you know, we've been covering Rochester, Tippecanoe Valley, Caston, and um, Argus for four years, roughly. We've been covering Rochester since 2009, uh, brought Valley on a couple of years later, and then I added the rest. The demand is there. Folks continue to write in, hey, can we get more? Can we get more? And so uh, we found a way to do that. We've expanded our coverage area. We now have eight schools that we partnered with. Uh, in, in addition to Rochester, Tippecanoe Valley, Caston, and Argus, we have added North Miami, Winnemac, Culver, and Pioneer schools. We're firing up their TV stations, if you will, where you're going to be able to see live content and uh, post-produced content coming from these guys. And uh, it's been great. This got started, kind of, by uh, what you and I did last fall. Mm -hmm. um, our teams were out of the football sectionals. We got a call from Pioneer saying, we don't have any coverage down here. Would you like to come cover a game? You and I said, sure. And we did that. And wow, <laughs> the response was overwhelming, I would say. Yeah, very overwhelming. We went down for the sectional championship and, mm -hmm. and got the at game. At the pit. That was at, at the, the pit. At Pioneer with the game with uh, Lafayette Catholic. Mm -hmm. And uh, the response was very good with that. And we went back two weeks later and picked up the Monroe Central semi-state game. Yeah. Uh, that one actually got moved over to Lo uh, Logansport. Yeah, because of the weather and the field conditions. Because of the field conditions. Mm -hmm. And that was a very neat experience. Oh, well, it, the, it rained on us that night, too. Yeah. We had yeah. wind blowing cameras down, and uh, yeah. but, you know, uh, we endured. I, I think we ended up with, what, 12,000 views on oh, that game? Oh, it was something like 12,000. It yeah. was huge. Uh, yeah. we, we had folks calling us from uh, Logansport telling us that they were watching it at BW3s down there or some other restaurants down right. there. It was really good experience, and we enjoyed that. Um, Kind of got the blood flowing a little bit about the expansion idea, and uh, we pulled the trigger late in the summer. So as we continue to go through this, uh, almost the end of the fall season here, but as we get into the winter, you'll see us ramping up more and more and more. And hopefully by the end of the basketball season, we've covered all the schools and done so well. Um, but it's, it's a lot of work. It is a lot of work. <laughs> and. It, it's been helped by the people at yeah. the schools and oh, yeah. you know pioneer and they jumped in and then got going early yeah. and i think we've done every game for them this season we did for get football. It, we, we have done every football game we covered some volleyball down there as sure. well sure uh caller community has a very good crew up there that uh, i think we missed one game up there and then they got rolling pretty uh pretty well yeah and we're we're working on getting uh, everything we're still kind of in process with north miami and yeah. winnemac yeah but we've gotten a couple of their games, and we've gotten a couple of the Winnemac games. So uh, it's been a it's been a whirlwind. <laughs> it has, it has. There are a thousand uh, moving parts to each of these. You know, as I tell folks, on any given live production that we do, there are a thousand points of failure, and all it takes is one to shut down the whole thing. So we've been fortunate. We've got great technicians and and experts truly here at RTC that have been uh, kind of behind the scenes putting this together. 
But uh, again, Steve Stricker, he's our sports director. You're going to see more out of him with regard to interviews. You're going to see player profiles, a lot more. But we got to get him up to speed first. He's got a lot of work to do just to understand all the pieces and parts that are behind the scenes. He's doing great. And uh, I think it's just truly uh, a point of pride that we can sit back and say, we're about to cross a million minutes viewed online this week. Uh, we're still in October. We have yet to do any football sectionals. We've not even done a volleyball sectional at this point. And uh, an entire basketball, swimming, and, and wrestling season ahead of us. And so 2018 has is, is truly been a historic year for RTC. Um, Steve's been a great part of that. We've got some other folks. Dakota Hayden is an associate producer for us now. Came out of the casting schools, been doing great stuff. And Libby Woodjick uh, came out of Rochester High School, was an intern for me a few years ago. She's in her 20s now and doing great work for us here at RTC. Um, and so a lot of people doing good things. Again, Joe McCarter with the vision mm -hmm. to, to bring me in and uh, give me a little bit of rope to see what we could build from it. And I yeah. think we made some bridges out of the rope. I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He, you always give a guy a rope and you wonder what he's going to make out of it. And sometimes it's a noose and sometimes it's a bridge. Yeah. And I, I, I would say that we're making bridges right now. I hope to think so. I hope yeah. to think so. Well, I'm going to jump right in. We're uh, It's football time. Now, again, you're going to be seeing uh, a lot of volleyball action, more than we've ever covered. You're going to see more soccer action than we've ever covered. We've already started those coverages up. But we're rolling out into the sectionals for football. That's going to start um, Friday night. And a lot of interesting sectionals as things kind of came down here at the end of the season. Uh, Rochester, probably one of the hardest sectionals in the state. We'll let Steve talk about that. But uh, a lot of good things. So I'll let uh, kind of turn it over to Steve, let you jump in, and I'll ask some questions as we go along here. Talk about sectional preview for football 2018-19. All right, Scott. Hey, appreciate it. Uh, yeah, we're just going to get right into it. We're going to talk a little bit about all of our different schools and where they're playing and, and what their opportunities are at the uh, sectionals. Uh, we've got seven of our eight schools, obviously. Uh, Argus doesn't have football, so we're going to have seven of the eight schools that we cover that we're going to be talking about. Uh, six games because uh, Cast and Winnemac, they're going to be each uh, other. playing each other, okay. so that'll uh, eliminate one of the games. And we're just going to get right off to it here. We're going to start in the 3A sectional 27. Uh, Tippecanoe Valley is a member of that sectional, and they got a pretty good first round uh, hmm. draw. Um, they're going to be headed down to Peru to take on the Bengal Tigers. Uh, Peru comes in. And these records are all, we're recording this before the final game of the season, so right. this re, this uh, reflects we have yet games. to Yeah, we haven't played the, the TRC Championship week right. yet, and uh, as those games come come across, uh, these schedules or these records will change ever so slightly. So, Yeah, so, you know, these are uh, reflecting eight games versus nine. So, uh, Tippy Valley has had a great uh, last four games. Yeah. They started off one and three, but, you know, Coach Moriarty, he knew... There was going to be some, mm -hmm. you know, struggles in the beginning of the season. You had an, a Culver Academy, you had a Bremen, some really good teams that they played early on, mm -hmm. and, and they started out one and three, uh, finished out four and zero oh in the last four games. Yeah, with and a big win over Rochester, a huge win mm -hmm. at home, and, and they won the bell, and uh, so they're going into sectionals with a lot of momentum. They're uh, they're hoping to have their uh, leading rusher Cam Parker mm -hmm. back. Uh, he has 750 yards rushing on the season. Nice. Um, he suffered a concussion in that Rochester game, so yeah. he missed a couple games there. They're hoping to have him back. Uh, they're averaging 214 yards a game rushing and 74 yards a game receiving, so they got a little bit of a balance. Yeah. And uh, Parker is one of those kids that, you know, I did a couple of their games. One game he had 170 yards mm -hmm. rushing. The next week he goes over to Manchester, puts up 200 yards on the ground. Yep. Uh, so he's definitely one that if he's healthy and he's in good shape, uh, he's going to make a huge difference for them. Yeah. Uh, Peru, you know, they come in at 0-8. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a rebuilding year. I mean, we've seen that. You're going to see that uh, across the conference, right? Yeah. It's just that year for Peru. Um, they've got some younger kids coming up. Their numbers were down a little bit. They're, you know, they're, they're looking for those numbers to come up out of the middle school to be a little stronger next year. But a rebuilding year coming in 0-8. Yeah. Yeah. So as you, as you look in the bracket here, we'll show that on the screen. Mm -hmm. uh, you look in on the bracket, Peru has a, a really good opportunity to advance there out of the first round. Now the, the second game of the sectional, that's going to be a probably a McConaughey win. Uh, John Glenn has, mm -hmm. has really been struggling this year. Okay. 
and that would set up a home game for Tippy Valley against McConaughey. Okay. And uh, McConaughey is one of those teams that you know they've had their struggles over the last few years, mm -hmm. but they're doing very well at six and two this year, yeah. and uh, you know they're in the second place or the third place game for the TRC and going up against the Zebras this week. Right. Down at McConaughey. Right. So. Uh, if you look down through the uh, through the bracket, then you know we're going to move on. You got Knox at, at Jimtown, you've got Mishawaka Marion at Fairfield, and you can see their records there. Um, you know I gotta like McConaughey coming out of this sectional. Really, I, I really do. Okay. I, I think they have a great opportunity. Knox is one of those teams that has kind of been, mm. you know, they they've won a lot of games, but they've also you know, Hoosier North Athletic Conference, uh, a three A school, basically playing a lot of one A schools. Yeah, and, and we saw Knox uh, numerous times here on RTC TV. For uh, Phil up there, the AD was was great with us. Um, we were up there four times this year. We saw them early, and they were big. And that's all you heard in that first week is Knox has got some big kids. I was surprised they didn't do more with that. Mm -hmm. um, I think they're surprised they didn't do more with that. A three A school. Mm -hmm. um, they've got the bodies. Um, they've got some big bodies. They just there's some pieces that still seem to need to gel for Knox up there, and they may gel during sectional, or it may take another year. But yeah, they're um, they're definitely they're one that that could get on fire. I mm -hmm. mean, five and three going in. Uh, like I said, it's just kind of kind of strange. Mm -hmm. You know, they 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 haven't probably had as good a season as they had hoped they would have. Uh, you know, and if they get, if they do, they get, you know, catch fire, they get in there yeah. and, and they can do some things in the, in the sectional, but. Yeah. And that's why we play the sectional. Say so, hey, you could gel right then and there in that 10th week, ready to go. Right. So you just don't know what's going to happen, but, uh, some great insight there for the Tippecanoe Valley, uh, sectional going on for football. Again, they're down at Peru, uh, taking them on, uh, for the first round. We'll see how that goes. All right. Uh, we'll move on to sectional 35, mm -hmm. and that's your 2A sectional, and that's the Rochester Zebras. And this one, uh, Scott, <laughs> I tell you what, if you're a coach and you look at this sectional, wow, is it loaded. Yeah. Four games, and you can see all the records popping up right now. Every game has a team setting right now at either 8 and 0 or 7 and 1. <laughs> and that is unbelievable. That is. That is unbelievable. To pick who's going to come out of this sectional, it, you'd be crazy. Yep. Uh, if you're, you know, into that kind of thing, you look at that bracket and you're just like anybody could win that sectional. On any given night. Yeah. You know, yeah, and it, that's a really tough one and I believe that four of the teams in this sectional are all ranked within the top 10 in the state. Yeah. Uh, very very impressive sectional and yeah. You know, first round games. I think you can pretty much pick who's going to win sure. those. Looking at those records and stuff. Who's Rochester have that first week? Rochester plays Taylor, okay. which they haven't played since I'm going to say it's sometime in the '60s, like 19. Rochester versus Taylor. Yes. And this is Taylor out of the Kokomo area. Taylor is just south of Kokomo. Okay. And a lot of that is a they're not in the same conference, and b Taylor has always uh, generally been in one A school. I see. So they've moved up into two A, and uh, that sets up an opportunity for them to play and it's Great. it's been uh you know obviously none of the kids none of the kids parents probably some of the kids grandparents <laughs> might have uh you know been around when right. that was uh played so um that's interesting and now that's uh taylor coming up here right to taylor, rochester taylor will be up here and uh, rochester actually has the potential uh, with eastbrook and oak hill uh, the winner of that game playing the winner of rochester and mm -hmm. taylor if uh, Eastbrook wins, mm -hmm. then Rochester hosts the second game, so too. So we could possibly be here for the first two games of first, sectional. First two games, well, and then that, that would guarantee a, a road game for championship if you can get there. But right. That's a long road. Yeah, that is. That it's is a it's long as road. thick as we've seen it in, in recent years. And again, the Zebra's seen some success this year. Their only defeat coming at the hands of the Vikings during the uh, Bell game. Uh, a hard-fought contest there, and uh, you know they did their part last week. I know as I was watching, um, of, of course I'm I'm spoiled a little bit. I've got all of our games right in front of me on a Friday night, and uh, I'm watching and rooting for Wabash because Rochester had their game well in hand, and all you wanted to see was Wabash take down uh, 
Tippecanoe Valley uh, so that the Zebras would go to that bell or go to that championship game. And Tippecanoe Valley took care of business last Friday. So Rochester kind of sealed their own fate with a loss to the Vikings. But, right. um, you know, coming back, there's still a ton of potential. You've got a lot of leadership on that. Um, the kids that are playing this year and leading that team are the kids that saw that 0-10 season we had a couple of years ago. I think that still leaves that bitter taste in their mouth. So I think Brian Hooker and his staff have them really motivated. But um, what's your take on it? Well, let's just drill down a little bit on the Rochester-Taylor game. So the Zebras uh, mainly attacked on the ground, 260 yards average okay. uh, rushing and only 38 uh, receiving. 38 passing. Yeah, so, okay. you know, they got the, the three-headed, I'm going to call it three-headed monster. You know, Prater obviously leads. Mm -hmm. He's got 720 on the ground. But Isaiah Jackson and Bryce Abbott, you know, they're both uh, Jackson over 500 yards and mm -hmm. Abbott's almost at uh, 400 yards. Yeah. And I've watched a lot of the uh, the Zebras games. You know, they, they pound, they pound, they pound with Prater. And then you got Jackson, who's kind of a change of pace guy. It's quick. And, and, and oh, man, he can hit that corner yep. and, and get going. Uh, so they've got a, a lot of weapons in the uh, offensive attack on the ground. Uh, Taylor comes in. They're only 2-6 and six on the year. 150 yards rushing a game and 74 yards receiving, so a little bit more balanced for yep, them. Yep. But the numbers are down. They do have a senior um, running back, Anthony Townsend, who looks kind of smallish, yeah, maybe stocky, I guess, 5'9", 165. Okay. Uh, he's got 855 yards rushing, average is 107 per game. Wow. Yeah, so, you know, they're... Quick they're, and tough and yeah, tough to tackle, right? Yeah, right, mm -hmm. tough to tackle, mm -hmm. so... You got to look at that. They're playing some pretty tough teams in the Kokomo area. Yep. So, I I got kind of lured into that kind of thing in, in high school one time with when we played Pioneer actually, mm -hmm. thinking okay they're you know six and five or whatever six and three whatever they were, mm -hmm. but you know they were playing some really tough teams. Yep. You yep. can't look at that schedule and, and and the record and say okay two and six this is a gimme. Sure. You know so the zebras they got uh, every opportunity to uh, get that first round game but uh, Excellent. Excellent. they got to go out and play they do yeah. and uh, you know again coaches had them pretty fired up uh, it was disappointing on the uh, typical new valley loss but uh, they came back next week and play or last week and played hard um, looking forward to see what they're going to do with down at McConaughey this week, you know. And I'm surprised by the passing numbers. Um, Perez is an athlete, mm -hmm. and uh, you know he can he can whiz that ball down there. And I know we've got some guys with some hands and some speed. Yeah. Um, I just think it's been a matter of they didn't need to. Right. You know, if you're if you can keep it on the ground and you can pound it and win ball games, yeah, you'll air it out just to kind of throw them off, but you're not going to count on that. But. Yeah. Uh, It'll be interesting to see what uh, Coach Kelly uh, brings out from the offensive side, whether he brings some more pass into it. I think it'll take a little bit more passing to get very far into this uh, tournament this year. Well, the the one good thing, though, with their running attack, as you get farther and farther into it, the weather gets worse and yeah, that's worse. That's a really good and, point. You know, so having a good ground game yeah. is you know yeah. a very good thing. Uh, I guess to wrap a bow around sectional 35, if you will, mm -hmm. Whoever wins that thing mm -hmm. is going to earn it. Yeah. <laughs> With the teams that are in that, whoever wins that, whoever it is, I'm not even going to make a prediction on this one <laughs> at all. Whoever we want our zebras that, to make it all the way, but we do, it's a but tough it, call. Oh, it, whoever, yeah. like I said, whoever wins it is going to earn it, yep. and they're going to have a shot of going a long way. Yeah. Because they're going to be battle tested. Yeah. The battle for, for the battle for this uh, road, if you will, to state mm -hmm. is really starting at uh, the sectionals for these guys, and so. Yeah, if Rochester can make it out of that sectional, they've got, you know, they've they've shown themselves. So. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, good to know. Well, who's next on the agenda? Well, we'll move down to Class A, okay. where the uh, the rest of our teams are all going to be playing, mm -hmm. and uh, we've got two different sectionals going on in the Class A. We'll start out at Sectional Forty One. Up on the north. Uh, up north okay. there. Yep. And uh, the first game on there will pop the uh, uh, bracket up here for you. And uh, you, you look at this part of the sectional, sectional 41, and, and there's a lot of Hoosier North Athletic Conference teams yep. in there. And you get a lot of replays of games that have happened earlier this yeah. year. Yeah. Uh, first up is, is Triton taking on Culver. Mm -hmm. That is a replay of a game that happened in uh, September over at Triton. Yep. The uh, Cavaliers lost that one 35-21. 
that was one of those, you look at the 14 points, it was seven points late in the game mm-hmm. and a turnover for Culver. Right goes down and scores the 14. So right. they had the opportunity. Yeah. They were they were marching this close. Yeah, and yeah. Culver's whole season was that. Yeah, it really you was. Know, this close. They had South Central all the way down to the last minute and lost. They yeah. had, you know, several opportunities to win games, but they're a very very young team. Yeah. And Zaner's just done. Mike Zaner, the coach up there, he's also the athletic director. I think he's head groundskeeper as well. I, <laughs> dean of students. Dean of students. Yes. There you go. Uh, yes. you know, he, he does everybody up at Culver wears multiple hats and oh, yeah. I'm just super impressed with the folks that we've met up there and and getting to know uh, the school system and the people involved. Um, but Mike's done just a great job firing up those students. They got the Zaner zone down at the corner where they welcome the kids in. And they've really fired up and re-energized that Culver program. And it's just the early stages is where we are. So yeah. you see the you see the simple mistakes, some fundamental mistakes that have cost them a game or two. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, you know, they, they seem like a team that really wants to get over that last hurdle and be ready to run. So... Yeah, and and you look back on last year, they they had a really good senior senior class last year. Mm-hmm. Uh, they got one of them that's playing at, at D two at yep. Saginaw Valley State, yep. a lineman. I mean, they lost a lot of big kids, yep. and so they're they're very young. And they actually their quarterback last year uh, went back over to Culver Academy, huh. so they they started off with a new quarterback. They started off with a new line. Um, yeah, and Coach Zayner, he's a Culver alum. Yep. And he came back home, so to speak. He yep. spent a couple of years down here in Rochester coaching and did a really good job down there mm-hmm. and uh, went back home. Yeah. And he is really, and like you said, everybody at Culver wears multiple hats. Yeah. I mean, you, you've got our Culver crew, mm-hmm. uh, Chris Stevens and, <laughs> yeah. and Mike Bushman. I mean, Chris Stevens is calling games, coaching girls soccer. <laughs> Uh, you know, doing other things as well. These guys are calling PA for the game while calling the game on our air sometimes. Yeah, and, uh, Mike Bushman calling yeah, soccer games, running the PA guys. at the same time. <laughs> and, you know, coming into uh, winter season, yeah. he's the wrestling coach. Okay. Yeah, so he'll be doing that. He may be, you know, wearing the headset and coaching at the same time. So, yeah, everybody does a lot of different things. I and love that. it's the small community up there, and, and they really love their football. They love these kids. Uh, they run the triple threat uh, mm-hmm. o- option offense, and so I mean they pack it in, and you know what they're going to do? They're going to run right up front, and their leading rusher, uh, Zach Dittmeyer, you know he's averaging almost 130 a game. Wow! And but he's not the only one. You know you got Caleb Jones, he's averaging 66 a game. Okay. And then they got that kind of change of pace guy too, a freshman Jalen King, and uh, Quick. he can he can pop one outside on yeah. you. He Just can take pop that one corner outside and go, on you. Huh? He's averaging 42 a game. Wow. Yeah. So you're just under 250 a game yeah. uh, on the ground for them. Yeah, actually 298. 298. 298 so on the ground and yeah. a, a whopping 13 in the air. <laughs> you know, not much of it, not Worked much of a passing game. game. Yeah. yeah. I think the first game of the year over at Judson, they went 0 for 2 for passing. Nice. Only two attempts. Mm. So this is a game with Triton and Culver Community uh, at Culver this time, battle tested. I think that Culver can get them. Culver going to come over the top this year. Triton is doing very well. It's mm-hmm. not going to be an easy game for mm-hmm. Culver, but I think that the Cavs have an opportunity. You look at the records and you say, well, they're only two and six. They could very easily be five and one, mm-hmm. very easily, or five and three. Mm-hmm. You know, they could very easily be there, and you know, it is what it is, and and we'll see what happens. And then it might be one of the best contests of that first Friday night, though. It will be. It should be a very good one. Uh, we got another one down in the bottom half of that bracket with Judson and Laville. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, but th- that's not on Channel Four, so we don't. No, care that's about not that. on Channel yeah, Four. That, right, that doesn't right, even happen. Right, if it's not on Four. It doesn't happen. That's my new motto in life. <laughs> so uh, yeah. let's drop down to the bottom half of that bracket. Now the, the, you say that about Judson, but Judson is playing Pioneer this week. So right. if you want to get a look. At what they Johnson's will be on doing, Channel 4. you're going to see them on Channel Four here yeah. with uh, taking on Pioneer. Steve was up earlier in the week, uh, meeting with their AD, testing the connectivity, that type of stuff. So we're looking forward to that game. I don't think it'll be much of a contest for Pioneer. Well, and you know, it, okay. it, it, there haven't been many of those. Yeah, and we'll get to haven't. Pioneer. We'll, we'll here talk in a about it. Yeah, we'll get to Pioneer. Get ahead of myself here. Uh, so if you look down there, the the winner of the Triton Culver game is going to take on the winner of the Winnemac and Caston game. Okay. 
And that obviously is going to be uh, one of them that we broadcast with mm -hmm. Winnemac and Caston. I'd like to see Caston get a win this year, not uh, not necessarily at Winnemac's uh, demise. But, um, you know, we'll talk about Caston here. I'm sure you'll get into it more. But uh, I kept the cameras rolling at Caston this year. Um, they, they've not had the a stellar season by any means. But the kids that are on that field deserve some camera on them. They do because you got three kids standing on the sidelines when you got everybody else out on the field, and that is the smallest team I have ever seen in high school football. Um, and to be able to do that and to make it through a season, it shows some serious perseverance and fortitude and integrity in these kids. Um, and if nothing else, it's been a great character building exercise. But um, we're going to have them. We're going to have them live on RTC TV for for their sectional play. And if they can get a win, fantastic. But I just want to say one time here on the air how proud we are of all the kids in the program down there at Caston doing what you've been able to do with small numbers. And, uh, again, just hats off to you and all you're doing. Win or lose, you've still done a great job this year representing your school. And you say that with the three kids standing on the sideline. It's not like they had 20 kids on the sideline at the beginning of the year and they just lost those <laughs> no. kids to injury. They had three the entire season. Yeah. So just the fact that they were able to get through the season yep. uh, was a, uh, a oh, testament to the kudos perseverance. Kudos to the trainers, too, yeah. down there that have kept yeah. them healthy. But And, you know, the I've talked to the athletic director down there, and he's hoping that this is a one-year yeah. anomaly yeah. with the numbers. I mean, they've got a freshman leading them in rushing with uh, 40 yards a game mm -hmm. from Sam Smith, and then mm -hmm. they got a junior, Gavin Hickel, who's uh, got 292 yards rushing on the season. Mm -hmm. You know, the numbers aren't great, but they've, you know, they've got young kids, yep. and the kids have stuck it out, and like you said, hopefully they'll stick it out and, yeah. and follow it through, and... You know, you talked about some of those Rochester kids that are coming back after they had an 0 and 10 year a couple yeah. of years ago, yeah. and and now look at what they're doing. Absolutely. So you know, it, it just it ebbs and flows, mm -hmm. especially in the small school like mm -hmm. Caston. So, um, Winnemac is is coming in. They're actually doing very well here late in the season. They've won their last three after starting one and four, and I've got to go over there and do a couple of their games. Coach uh, Craig Barr is eight and eleven in his second season there. Uh, you know, they've got a nice mix, uh, 150 yards rushing, 94 yards receiving. They're led by a, a freshman quarterback. Okay, I didn't know that. Yeah, uh, Russell Compton has taken over. I think it was the Calder game that he kind of got put in there as the uh, the main guy. He's 5'10", 160 pounds. Okay. Uh, but since coming in in the last, well, he's 40 of 67 for 602 yards and eight touchdown passes. Wow. For the season. Wow. Last three games alone, he's 30 for 40, and he has 400 of those yards. No kidding. Yeah, so 400 yards in passing in the last three games alone. That's impressive. He's completing 10, uh, 10 passes a game average. So he's not afraid to throw it, nor is Coach afraid to call the play. No, and his, um, you know, I, I went over to Winnemac and did the Winnemac versus West Central game. Uh-huh. And a very hotly contested game, obviously two county rivals, yep. uh, big time, and used to be conference rivals. That was our first live game from there, right? First live game okay. from Winnemac. Hey, kudos real quick to all the people at RTC who made that connectivity happen. Football uh, press boxes are not all wired for internet across the state, so uh, thank you for that. Anyways, digress. Yeah, and so he not only you know does well athletically, physically, mm -hmm. but he has the mind really poised yeah. for a yes, freshman very really. poised if you didn't look at the roster and see freshmen mm -hmm. you wouldn't know it oh, the great. way he commands the offense mm -hmm. so uh coach Barr has you know uh, obviously hasn't had the best season that he's ever had you know coming mm -hmm. in about 500 but uh he's got a lot of bright things on the a future a lot of potential yeah well that's just that's perfect perfect timing for our cameras to start rolling there, there as go. he's ebbing into it so yeah so i i give them a good shot obviously to okay. get through um I really look in this sectional, if you look down, obviously I've got LaVille coming out of the bottom half of the bracket to the championship game. Mm -hmm. And then I think whoever wins that Triton Culver community game is going to be in there with them. Yeah. And I I give uh, I give Culver as, as much of a shot as Triton to get there. Well, let's step back a second and talk about LaVille. We've seen him a couple of times as our teams have gone up there this uh -huh. year. Um, what kind of season are they having, and what are you know where are they at? Well, they're five and three, okay. and their losses have all been you know obviously Pioneer, mm -hmm. uh, you know to the to the 
bigger in. So they're kind of one tier down, if you will, in okay. the conference. Mm -hmm. You know, right behind Pioneer, okay. they're they're basically number two or number three in the conference. Gotcha. So uh, they have a, a very good shot. They play North Judson, and that game is a rematch of a game that was a couple weeks ago. Yep. And Laville just handed it to them. Yeah. They handed it to Judson, and that's a good Judson team that it, they're handing it to. It is. Okay. It's a very good Judson team. So. LaVille is the defending champ in mm -hmm. that sectional, and, and I give them a, a really good shot of coming out of there again. Nice. Uh, they've, they've got a, a great thing. Uh, coach Will Hostrauser mm -hmm. up there, the uh, the head coach. He's also the ath athletic director at uh, LaVille as well, yep. and he is a no-nonsense guy. Okay. He is a football coach through and through. Yeah. You can tell that as soon as you talk <laughs> to him. And he does take care of things up there, and, and LaVille's program you know, did a complete 180 from yeah. day one when he was there. Okay. So he's done a he's done a great job. Up Kudos there. to the folks up there at Laville. Again, um, you know you're not the only one uh, predicting a uh, Laville Triton Culver final there, um, but some good contests I think in that sectional. Yeah, so that does it for sectional 41. So we'll pop down one to sectional 42, and we will bring up the uh, bracket here for you on sectional 42 and. I'd, I'd like to say that there's some competition in that bracket, but uh, <laughs> what do you say about Pioneer? I've watched uh, every game, and, and God love you, Pioneer. Um, it's It's been boring at times. Um, they are marching over people. It is, it is like the Bears came down to play the Zebras one night. I mean, they are just marching over teams, and we saw... Uh, now, was it uh, Triton got the first score on them, or LaVille, one of those guys, earlier this year? LaVille. 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 There's only been two teams. Yeah, that they, Triton they even and got LaVille. a score. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, LaVille threw it on them early, beat a corner. They actually and, had uh, the lead for mm -hmm. a little bit of the first quarter. Yeah, it, it was pretty quick. But, yeah. um, you know, kudos to them. But Pioneer's team, the Pioneer community, is, as I said at the beginning of this program, i just so impressed. I'm, I'm impressed with John Bingham. I'm impressed with Jeremy Tucker. I'm impressed with... Mr. Charles Grable, who's their superintendent, um, I'm impressed with the parents that I'm talking to when I'm down there. Mm -hmm. um, I I don't know that of the eight schools that we have that anyone has embraced our program as much as Pioneer has. So we feel welcome down there, um, and it's nice that they're playing great football. As I've told everybody, yeah. every one of our schools is going to ebb and flow with time. You're going to have good years. You're going to have bad years. Pioneer has just kind of been having those good years, and they seem to be getting better. So it's a good thing happening at Pioneer. And, of course, you've got uh, Mr. Kaiser. Uh, yeah, I don't know if anybody's heard of him or not. but uh, you know, Folks, we got a kid that you might not have heard of, but yeah. if you're a recruiter out there, you might want to get an eye on it. It's a little late for that. Is it, is yeah, it? he's already committed. Yeah. Jack Kaiser going to Notre Dame. Yeah. Um, a D1 athlete coming out of a 1A pioneer out uh -huh. of Royal Center, Indiana, is just as impressive. I mean, that's a Cinderella story if you ever heard one. Yeah, and the thing with him, Scott, he's an a, a, a tremendous athlete. Mm -hmm. He's an even better kid. He is. He's an even better kid. He's valedictorian yeah. of his class. Yeah. Uh, everybody that I've talked to down there at Pioneer just raves about how good of a yeah. kid he is. Yeah. He, he does wonderful things with the little kids, and... You know, he deserves everything that he's getting. He's a Lily finalist yep. for uh, Cass yeah. County. Yeah. I mean, just unbelievable. And you, you talk about the little kids. And just a uh, quick story. I, I would, you know, we go down early. We set up our gear. The crews are all out there. And Jack already has a following of these kids who just, you know, will you sign this for me? And he handled that like a... 50-year-old veteran of the sport who just knew how to, you know, uh -huh. just so poised and mature. Yeah. Um, how he's handling the pressure of the spotlight that's on him, I have no idea. I, I think I would, you know, melt under it. But he is doing great. I know he's got a very strong-knit family down there. Yes. And uh, just a great base of support to keep him kind of centered. And I yeah. love that about him. Well, and, and we'll talk a little bit about his numbers. I yeah, mean, let's talk about how he does on the field. And it's not just Jack. That's the thing it, with Pioneer. You're, you're it, Jack right. is obviously the man, but it's not just Jack. Yep. So uh, Coach Adam Berry, third season with Pioneer as the head coach, coming off of uh, about 25 years of uh, Coach Johnson, yep. who really built that program there. But Coach Berry in three years has lost one game. One game. One game. And it was just, you know, state championship Only. game two years ago. Only. You know. So, you know, he's done a, a fantastic job. Uh, 
I think that I heard somebody say that this group of seniors has lost maybe two games in their career. In their career. Yeah. From third grade. Yeah. So and and that's the thing. They've been playing since third grade. Yeah. You know, that's that's Argus soccer kind of numbers. Mm-hmm. You know, that's when they start. So Kaiser comes in. Let's see where his numbers are. Uh, 37 of 58 passing for 764 yards and 11 touchdowns. Weak. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> rushing, 77 carries, 895 yards. He's averaging 11.6 yards a carry. Kid can't run, kid can't pass. Yeah, 21 touchdowns. 21. Yeah, you know. Weak. So total yards uh, for the season, 1,659. Holy cow. You know, no big deal, right? <laughs> I, and that, that's just, that's not even why he's going to Notre Dame. Right. They're he's going, going there to Notre for Dame for defense. Yep. Yeah, so you look at his defensive stats, 36 solo tackles, 57 assisted tackles, six interceptions. Yeah. If you watch Jack during the game, if you didn't know what position he was supposed to be playing on defense, you really wouldn't because the kid will make a sack – or an interception on yeah. back-to-back plays. Yeah, um, and that's pretty unheard of. He he truly plays at a different level, and, oh, yeah. and you know this isn't the Jack Kaiser shows, but what that does to the rest of the team. Yeah, teams and kids that have never seen that level suddenly begin to gravitate towards that oh, yeah. level. Yeah, it pulls you up, and then you got a program, and then you yeah. got yeah. people saying, yeah. Pioneers going to be better next year than they are this year. Yeah. Then they'll say that next year again and again and again. It's a great program. We love what we're seeing down there. Um, but my goodness, this kid's numbers are off the charts. Yeah. And like you said, it's not all about Jack, but obviously Jack yeah. kind of uh, drives the boat down there. We talk about the Llewellyn brothers quite a bit down there. Yeah. Um, on the returns, the kickoff returns. Yeah. Thing. Oh my goodness. Yeah. It is very lightning hard. fast. Lightning fast. Lightning fast. And Jack, you know, he goes six two two fifteen ish, and he runs, you know, a four four five. I think they said. Yeah. And, you know, not very fast. You'll get faster, Jack. Yeah. You know, one of these days but, you can uh, beat me. But the, uh, the Llewellyn brothers, uh, Ezra and Adai, mm-hmm. you know, and I don't remember which one. I think, uh, I don't even want to say. One of them's just a little faster. One of them's just a little <laughs> slower. I mean, so they're we'll all. We'll let you make that decision yeah. at home. We should so, do a poll on Facebook, right? So they're all right there. And, and they're sophomores. And I don't know if you, yeah. if you watched the state championship game last year. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it was Ezra. And I apologize for not knowing which one it was, but uh, an amazing game yeah. in the state championship yeah. game. And uh, as are, a freshman, are the, are the brothers the same age? Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, yes. Well, that's fantastic, and uh, just great things happening down there at Pioneer. Of course, we're going to cover them all the way through. Um, if they go to state again this year, we'll go down and you and I'll do some live coverage from the sidelines, but we won't uh, be able to show the game. You'll watch that through the IHSAA. But it's been neat. It's been neat to go down there. It's been neat to see some new competition. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know that we had played North White very much prior to that. And, you know, we've been over to North White and talked to some of those folks. And right. it's that's the neat thing about expansion is we get introduced to some new teams that we sure. haven't seen before. So sure. how they do on their season, of course, you and I know this, but uh, they might not. Undefeated. Well, 8-0 eight, eight no, uh, no. going into this taping, but obviously going to be probably 9-0 and oh pretty easily mm-hmm. there. Um, I do want to give a couple other guys a little Please, love. Please, I'm sorry. That's all right. Uh, Danny Gregorich, mm-hmm. uh, who I had a heck of a time getting his name right. <laughs> I had a buddy, uh, Grant Montgomery, who's from Pioneer, that was helping me out with the uh, Hooked on Phonics during the Lafayette <laughs> Catholic game. But uh, Danny Gregorich, uh, he is a, uh, a fullback for them, and he's got 55 carries for 560 yards, yeah. uh, eight touchdowns, and he is a beast yeah. on defense. Yeah. Middle linebacker. His his uh, brother is the uh, defensive coach, and he's got 12 solo tackles, 28 assisted tackles, and he is just a brick house. Yeah, I mean, he just uh, built like a, a you know things that I can't say on here. <laughs> but uh, yeah, Danny Gregory, he's another senior there for the uh, the Panthers. Great. Uh, they also have Callahan Kinley. Uh, he's a receiver for uh-huh. them. 435 receiving yards on 17 catches, averaging 54, 55 a game, and he's got five touchdowns wow. as well. So it's not, you know, like we said, it is a lot of jack, mm-hmm. but there's also a lot yeah, of yeah. other pieces there. Coach has done well to, to round out his team. You know, he Very. knows you can only go so far. And, of course, in front of all of those guys is a line that oh, yeah. is exceptionally well-disciplined. 
they know where to step. They don't uh, they don't cheat and yeah. they don't they don't uh, give a tell on which way it's going. Yeah. And they get out there and they push those lines. Yeah. Time and time and time again. And uh, you know I haven't seen I would say too many long drawn out drives by Pioneer. You know where they they've run twenty two plays to get well, down they the field because they haven't needed <laughs> right. to. But these guys get out there, and it is smash mouth football on every yeah. offensive play. Yeah. And then you get to the other side of the ball when they are on defense. The other teams that I've seen have been intimidated from the first play. Yeah. Um, and wow, to instill that out of a one A school to be that far above your competition is just impressive. Well, a couple of weeks ago, you know, Culver went down there, and you look at what they did, and Pioneer last year was probably 80% run and not a lot of pass. Mm -hmm. And they've, they've really added that with Kinley really coming on strong and then Jack doing a lot better job, and they're just looking to throw more. Mm -hmm. And you saw that in the Culver game. First play of the game, they throw a 30-yard you know catch, reception, touchdown, mm -hmm. just like that, right mm -hmm. out of the gate. And mm -hmm. Culver's no slouch, and they put 72 on them. Yep. You know, and for for that, you can look across the board from player to player to player. Mm -hmm. Front line, everybody is just bigger, mm -hmm. faster, mm -hmm. stronger, and honestly smarter. Uh, not saying that you know they would outsmart them in a SAT or anything like that. Their knowledge of the game. Their football mm -hmm. knowledge mm -hmm. is just off the charts. That's great. Every one of them players is just unbelievable, and that is a it's it's a uh, you know, it goes back to the coach. It goes back to they start in third grade. Mm -hmm. You know, and they start working from there, and, yeah. and they go up into that. And well, the year we won state at '87, um, I will have to say that the group of seniors coming through that year was as tight knit as any mm -hmm. that we'd ever had. I mean, these were kids that, that had been playing tackle football since third grade together, mm -hmm. and you know, some of them get big arms as they get bigger, and some of them get big bellies on them as they get bigger, and they gel beautifully as a team of people. Right. Uh, everybody had their role and their position. And, you know, we talk all the good about Pioneer. You don't hear it across the state as you watch these other programs and all these other, you know, talking heads pontificating on, hey, how's it going to go? Where's their weakness? I've got my own, I've seen a couple of things that it would take the right team doing the right things. But, for example, I think they're a little soft on the corners. I'm not saying the guys don't have the speed. I'm not saying that they don't have the hands. I'm just saying that I don't think they've been tested on those corners right. very well this right. year. And that LaVille touchdown was exactly that, going over the edge. You know, yeah. just a little fly down there, unexpectedly got past him, touchdown. That would be the only area. Okay. Um, well, in the kicking game, <laughs> they can't kick an extra point for anything, but uh, they haven't, haven't had to. Haven't needed no. to. So. The two points are But just, if it comes into play, that is an area that, you know. Right, the kicking game. And, and yeah, LaVille did kind of expose them a little bit. Nobody else has been able to do that. Mm -hmm. But, uh, man, they got to get to that point. And, yeah. and they just do such a good job of shutting it down. And, and the thing is that LaVille had, and it's, you're, you're going to have to have to do any damage against them is multiple weapons. Mm -hmm. You know, because Kaiser can shut down a whole side of the field by mm -hmm. himself. Mm -hmm. And then you throw a die and you throw Ezra on the other side, and it's it's done. Yeah. But LaVille had that opportunity. They had a couple of weapons on both sides mm -hmm. of the field. and But you saw the, the end result even at mm -hmm. that. Yeah. You know, they still ended up with a huge Well, you, you know, it's the type of team that, yeah, they get punched in the mouth once. <laughs> they, they didn't tuck tail and run. They stood back up. They wiped the dirt from their face, and they said, let's go. Yeah, definitely. Um, so they rebounded there well. And what I really like here, Steve, is that, of course, all year, every newspaper outlet in the area is Jack Kaiser, Jack Kaiser, or, or Llewellyn is all you see in the headlines. You've talked about some of the other kids. It takes a team. There's 11 people out there on that field at any given moment, and if one of them fails, the whole thing fails. Right. So uh, kudos to the whole team. And that's a pressure in and of itself to have this elite athlete and all that media focus on you and still get out there and perform week after week. So it is. kudos it is. to them. And, uh, you know, I, I don't know all the kids very well, mm -hmm. but I, I have a lot of friends in that area, mm -hmm. and, and I don't know that there's a bad kid in that group. No, and I'm looking all. forward to years of coverage down there. Yes. This is, You know, we're getting in there this year through, through our four-school expansion. It is a year when they're being successful, but, um, you know, it'll ebb and flow with time. But I, I look forward to becoming a part and more ingrained in that community down there at Royal Center and, and all of our schools. 
All right, so let's drop down to uh, the bottom half of sectional 42 and talk a little bit about North Miami. Yeah. Uh, North Miami is another one of our uh, new partner schools. and Ed Contreras and the folks down there. You went down there last year to cover a couple of basketball games yes. that were nowhere on our radar, but they had some special events last year and uh, really enjoyed the hospitality we had there. Yes. I don't know that it was the best game that we've ever covered, <laughs> that basketball game, but it was the best interviews. And it was the best, you know, we yeah. had players from the 68 team up there talking to you the whole time. Yeah. And uh, really enjoyed ourselves down there at North Miami and the Warriors down there. We've made the investment. We've put some stuff in place down there so that we can get their football. We're getting sure. ready to put the stuff in for basketball and the other sports. But uh, let's talk a little bit more about North Miami football. All right. So as they open up play in sectional 42, they're going to have a handful coming up. They've got a Tri-County team that's coming in at 6-2. and two. Uh they're, you know, North Miami's gonna gonna have their hands full. They're three and five coming in as of right now, averaging about 135 yards a game receiving, okay, and about 113 on the ground. So yeah. that's one of the rare high school teams that actually has more receiving yards than than running yards. Now he ran the pistol. Uh, it's Coach uh, Joe Grant uh, was here in Rochester. Went back down to his alma mater, North Miami. He was running the pistol here, which was new for Rochester, and that mm -hmm. was the 0-10 season. Didn't seem to take well. Yeah. Has he still got the pistol down there? Still does a lot of the pistol. Okay. He's got a uh, senior quarterback, Tristan Working, who has uh, done a bulk of their uh, work. 69 of 135 with 100, uh, 1,128. 1,128, 1128 yards passing. passing yards, okay. 11 touchdowns. Does have six interceptions. Uh, he also has 532 yards rushing on 76 carries. So he's averaging about seven yards a carry. It's a as lot of well. pressure on a quarterback, though. To yeah, be he's, that he's their rushing. main. He's their main offensive threat. Yeah. Uh, Darren Hanley, a sophomore, is their main receiver. 454 yards on 23 catches, and uh, has four touchdowns out nice. of that. So you know. A little one-sided as far as the uh, you know the bulk of everything goes mm -hmm. through Tristan, mm -hmm. but um, they're going to have their hands full. They've got a tri-county team that's coming in. Like I said, at six and two, mm -hmm. they're averaging 378 yards a game rushing. Wow! Now, have we covered any tri-county? We have okay, not. None of our teams have played them yet this year. No, tri-county is located over in uh, I believe Wolcottville. Yeah, over in that area. Yeah. Uh, actually, my my last high school football game was played there. No kidding. We lost to Tri-County. Culver Cavaliers played Tri-County <laughs> Cavaliers. Yep. Interesting. So, uh, well, we've seen tears. them on volleyball a little bit. I know our guy's been pulling out the uh, Tri-County uh, Cavalier logo, so I know we've had them, but um, right. not in the football area. And, uh, again, they're coming into North Miami at 6-2. and two. North Miami's, what, 3-5 three and, three and five three as and we five speak. 3-5 as we're going into this week. Yeah. Uh, Tri County, like I said, 378 yards rushing. They've got two kids over a thousand. Mm. Actually, two kids over 1,200. That's going to be some trouble. Yeah, Kale Lawson, a six foot, 160 pound senior, has 1,206 yards rushing on 152 care or 115 carries and 22 touchdowns. Wow, quick, got to be quick at 160. 20, 22 touchdowns, and then they have a uh, another senior, Sam Getz, 1,623 yards rushing. Uh, 5'11", 150 pounds, just it has to be a rocket out of the backfield. 181 carries. He has 16 touchdowns. Wow. 38 touchdowns between the pair. Wow. Yeah, so uh, North... Well, we know where they're going to be keen. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's whether or not wow. they can stop them. Yeah, nobody's been able to stop them so far. And, and they come in, like I said, at 6-2. and two and uh, So essentially between, you know, when, when Tri-County comes into North Miami, you basically have three people who dominate the offensive statistics yeah, for yeah. those two teams. Yeah, Tristan working for North Miami and then uh, Lawson and Getz wow. for uh, Tri-County. And so, like we said, you know, you just never know. You look at that 6-2 and two for Tri-County, you don't know exactly who they've played, what kind of quality they've played. So there's always that opportunity, you know, for North Miami to catch fire sure. and, and possibly get through. And then if you look down at the, uh, the winner of the North Miami game, will take on the winner of North White and Lafayette Catholic. Mm -hmm. Lafayette Catholic is the one that you know has always been Pioneer's nemesis. Coming in this year at 3-5. and five, Yeah, a little bit of know, a rebuilding year for them. But last year was kind of a similar situation, and they made it. They did. And they made it to the sectional championship. But uh, 
you know, Lafayette Catholic, another one of those schools over in Lafayette area, they're playing West Lafayette, mm-hmm. they're playing Harrison, they're playing, you know, some big schools yep. over there. And so you can never sleep on Lafayette Catholic. No. And uh, if, if Pioneer and Lafayette Central Catholic end up playing each other, there'll be no love lost. They like that rivalry. They want that. Oh, um, yeah. They want that target, so to speak. But um, they've got some work to do to even, even make it to that point. Uh, again, Pioneer, the favorite in that sectional. Uh, the favorite in that class, <laughs> honestly. <laughs> I didn't I want mean, to be too know, boastful. Well, but I mean, they are the defending Class A champions. They are. You know, the year before, the runner-up. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, they haven't done much in the last couple yeah, of years. You know, Coach Barry, quiet. he's kind of slacking down yeah. there. You know, I don't know. Maybe they're going to look at replacing him or something. And <laughs> but, I mean, the Pioneer is just the, the class. And, uh, you know, and, and talking to some people, you know, boy, I wish I could see Pioneer in 2A. I wish I could see what they could do in 3A. Yeah. You know, it, it's just they're that good. And, um, you know, North Miami has an opportunity, you know, if they can get by Tri-County to get to that sectional championship mm-hmm. game. They have that opportunity. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's going to be a tough test. This is the first time we've been this thorough on doing a, a preview of our sectionals. Um, we're going to rehash this out each week as we go through and let you know where the teams in our area are. Um, we're not going to pretend to be the experts of what's happening down in Indianapolis with regard to a couple of teams down there. But we know local, um, and we know our teams. That's why we're with them all year. We don't chase the big game. We go to stick with our teams. We're loyalists, as I was telling yeah. Steve today. Yep. I don't know. It's 2018. I still believe in loyalty, and the folks that are loyal to us is uh, really important to it. But uh, we are loyal to you, so we're going to stick to that. We're going to inform you as we go from week to week over the course of these sectionals. Um, I'm looking forward to a long season. I think that uh, there's opportunity for RTC's cameras to be rolling all the way through state here. Um, don't know if we'll pick up anything else along the way as, as we uh, find some crews available. But uh, we'll do our best to bring you coverage from each of these schools, from each of these games. We cannot guarantee that we're going to be at every school. We're still looking for people to fill out some of our crews in some of our areas. That is a, uh, it's a trial and error. Uh, you got to find the right person. We are looking for people that are passionate about not only just the sports, but the community and the school. Um, so many things going on. And so as we continue to fill out these crews, we'll get you to the games that we can. If we miss them, we miss them. We'll try and uh, pick that up next year. It's just, yeah. it is what it is. And uh, for what we do here in Fulton County, Indiana, and in Rochester, Indiana, and in the basement studios here at RTC, uh, really, really uh, thankful that uh, we've got viewers like you that are loyal, that uh, you reach out to us and let us know what you like and that uh, things are working well. So uh, Steve Stricker, new sports director here. As you see, this is the kind of thing you get from Steve Stricker. He's going to know far more than I ever will about the big game and the players. Um, so we look forward to the uh, interviews coming up, some of the player profiles. We'll get more and more of those going as we... Uh, evolve even further here at RTC. Yeah, just um, real quick, I, I, I want to thank Scott <laughs> for having the uh, the faith in me to bring me in here. And uh, as a uh, farm kid from north central Indiana that grew up, you know, and obviously loving basketball, but sports in general, I mean, this this is like my dream job. I mean, I get to come in here and, uh, you know, you, you made the comment to me one time a couple weeks into it, you know, you're working too hard. <laughs> Worked for two weeks. You know this isn't a, this isn't a job, and so I, I thank you for having the faith in me to, to bring me in. Uh, thanks to Joe McCarter upstairs for uh, for ha- having the faith in you and you having the faith in me, yeah. and and it's just been it's been great, and it's going to get better. Like he said, we're just going to do more of these types of things. We're going to get more involved. I'm already looking at girls basketball for stuff to do with the coaches before the season starts. And uh, as we get into it and we get our feet on the ground with the crews and everything, we're, I, I'm excited. Excellent. I'm very excited. So uh, good luck to all of our teams here in the area as they uh, venture off into uh, football sectional play. And we'll, we'll be uh, continuing to, uh, to cover those teams uh, all the way through. Well said, sir. And again, uh, Scott Sager, Steve Stricker, we're here. We've got all the sports. We've got the people behind us. want to thank Dakota Hayden. Libby Woodjick, all the schools, all the ADs, all the parents. I don't know, I feel like I'm giving a speech and they're going to play music and get me off of it here like an award ceremony. But in all sincerity, 
it's not just Scott Sager. This isn't the Scott Sager show. This is RTC Studios. Scott Sager works for RTC. Uh, Steve Stricker doing more than he lets on to get all this going um, every week. It takes time. It takes energy. It takes hours. And you guys feed us. And uh, we appreciate you watching. We hope you tune in for more. Tell your friends about us. RTC4.com. More and better coming your way soon, right? Very much so. All right. So. Thanks again for watching this uh, sectional preview here. We'll be back next time here on RTC TV4.